Good morning. It's Tuesday, May 31st, and thank you for being with me. It's hard to believe that May is almost, uh, this is the last day of May. Uh, this year it seems to be flying by, and this is my favorite time of the year. Not quite summer yet, but boy, it, it feels like it. It's been a, had a really neat weekend. Um, nice and warm, a lot of chance to be outside. Uh, I hope you had a good Memorial Day weekend. It's nice to have three days off and enjoy time with family and friends. Um, we had a really neat service here, really blessed service on Sunday. Uh, celebrated Memorial Day. Pastor Keith shared with us uh, a story about um, a sailor in uh, at Pearl Harbor, how he saved his comrades, his fellow, fellow sailors. Um, his name was uh, Joe George. He threw out a lifeline, and Pastor Keith shared how uh, others were saved due to his courageous act and his selfless act. He not only saved himself, but others around him. And Pastor likened that to our lives, uh, how we have the opportunities a lot of times to help others, uh, others that are really hurting, um, others that maybe are, are facing um, crucial uh, life-threatening things in their lives, or uh, others that are spiritually dead, and we're able to help. So, a uh, very meaningful message. Uh, we enjoyed um, celebrating together. It's, it's really uh, neat to see after service how many of us just get together and talk and share, and and then even afterwards. Uh, Many go out to eat together, uh, spend time with family and friends, uh, and just share life. Uh, we have fine examples in the Gospels how um, the early church went from house to house daily breaking bread. So what a good example to us to live as Christians, to live um, life together. So I was able to do that too with some family and friends this last weekend. Uh, some of the scripture that he shared with us, and I added a little bit to it, is uh, John 15, 9 through 13. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. This is Jesus speaking. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be full and complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And that's what we, we have celebrated Memorial Day, but I'm, we did not have a devotional yesterday, so I want to share a little bit more about Memorial Day and the meaning of it and how we can live that out each and every day as Christians. And the, the t title of my devotional this morning is A Grateful Memorial Day. Memorial Day, as Americans have come to know it, began years immediately following the Civil War. At that point, it was called Decoration Day. People spent time, even now, um, decorating their homes. Um, a lot of us decorated grave sites over this last few weeks and even on Memorial Day, uh, remembering those that have gone before us. Um, it was a day to decorate the graves of the fallen servicemen and women. And I see that it's wonderful how... Um, not just those that have fallen, but the, the veterans in different um, cemeteries I've been in the last few weeks have the flag out. And a lot of them, um, with where, when they served, and uh, even my uncle, my uncle Mert out in, um, out in McLean uh, has a Purple Heart. It says Purple Heart on his, um, from his service days in Iwo Jima. So... President Lincoln beautiful, beautifully said, 
the last full measure of devotion that's to be remembered, to defend their nation. It was a day to remember that the honored dead had died to defend. Uh, a century and a half have passed since Lee surrendered to Grant at Appomattox, effectively ending the national nightmare that filled over 625,000 American graves with those that have fallen. Since then, our international nightmares have ravaged the world and put more than 650,000 additional graves in Europe, North Africa, the Pacific Rim, Asia, and the Middle East. Those are a lot of servicemen and women to remember and to commemorate. Remembering is for the future. Memorial Day is an important national moment. It is a day to do more than barbecue. It is right and wise to remember the great price some have paid to preserve the historically unprecedented civil and religious freedoms we Americans have the luxury to take largely for granted. But the importance of Memorial Day is more for our future than it is for our past. It is crucial that we remember the nightmares and why they happened. We forget them at our own peril. The future of the United States depends in large amount on how well we collectively remember and cherish what liberty really is and the terror of tyranny. There's a high cost of forgetting. In the words of George Senayanin's famous euphorism, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. A memorial people, Christians of all people, understand the crucial importance of remembering. Christians are memorial people because the whole of our faith depends upon remembering. Those who preserve into the glorious future are those who remember the gracious past. That's why God has surrounded us with memorials. The entire Bible itself is a memorial. We meditate on it daily to remember. The Sabbath has a memorial to Israel's freedom from Egyptian slavery, Deuteronomy 5.15. And the church switched it to Sunday as a memorial of Christ's resurrection and our freedom from sin. Israel's great gathering of feast memorials, Exodus 13.3, and each time a local church gathers, each Lord's celebration, 1 Corinthians 11.24 through 26, each baptism, each celebration, and each Easter celebration is a memorial. I guess I never really thought about all the memorials we have. We are continually thinking back and re-celebrating a lot of things that happened in the early church and through Christ's ministry. Remembering God, God's past grace is necessary to fuel our faith in God's future grace for us. This makes a memory of one of God's most profound, mysterious, and merciful gifts granted to us. God granted it to be a means of preserving grace for his people. We neglect it at our own peril. The future of the church globally, locally, and of each Christian depends largely on how well, remember the gospel of Jesus, to be Christ followers, a Christian, to remember the gospels, to remember how Jesus lived and how he showed us to live. What a blessing to remember, to remember all these precious things that Jesus has shared with us, his life. Scripture warns us that if we fail to remember we will be condemned to submit again to the sin and hell's enslavement. 
That's in Hebrews 6, 4 through 8. Such warnings are graces to help us remember. So we commemorate Memorial Day as Americans. Let us do it with profound gratitude for the extraordinary common grace given to us when men and women laid down their lives for the sake of America's survival. And let us remember the past evils that we may not repeat them in the future. As Christians, let us make every day, as long as it is called today, a memorial day. Hebrews 3, 12 through 14 states, See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you as sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. Be encouraged, but encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original conviction firmly to the very end, let us take care lest we forget the Lord. Let us take care lest we forget the Lord and those things that he wants, wants us to do. Let us remember Jesus Christ, 2 Timothy 2, 3 through 8. Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive a victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. A hard working, the hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I am saying. The Lord will give you insight into all this. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. That is my gospel. And that was Paul, Paul sharing that with Timothy. What a blessing. Those that have gone before us um, to preserve our way of life, our freedoms, the men and women who sacrificed, gave the ultimate sacrifice of their lives to defend us, and even those that go before us. Help us to be Christians that remember. There's family members, there's our Christian uh, mothers and fathers, our Sunday school teachers, our small group leaders that um, are out there helping us and, and walking alongside us. Help to be those, help us to be those kind of Christians that would be there, that would throw out that lifeline, like Pastor Keith talked about, to help those that are struggling, help those uh, come to know Jesus Christ in a real way and have a personal relationship. So I challenge all of us to do that, to throw out the lifeline and to be a lifeline to those around us. Um, there are those right now that, that we know that are hurting. Um, Help us to pray and, and see those that, that we can help. And I, I pray now for some of my family, well, my family members that we just lost, one of our loved ones, that um, they would bring peace to the family and the friends. So I just want to pray now. Lord, I just thank you for uh, those that have gone before us, that have paid the ultimate sacrifice, um, that have given their lives for the freedoms that we help us not to take for granted, but to be grateful for. And Lord, I thank you for you, Jesus, living that life and also that sacrifice of your life that we may remember you and live like you, Jesus. For all those around us that are hurting, that need saved um, by you, Lord, help us to throw that line out. Help us to be those people for them that you would have us to be to help those around us. Thank for your many blessings. Thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy. 
In Jesus' name, amen. just want to thank you for joining, and I pray that you would just enjoy uh, the summer weather that we're enjoying here in northwest Pennsylvania. Have a blessed day and week.